and welcome to Books of the Week. I hope you all got out and voted today. Uh, the first book we're looking at this week is Mother Panic Number 1. It's from the Young Animals in print, or pop-up as they call it. Um, it's based, it is from DC, um, and everything that's come from the Young Animals line has been nothing short of incredible. And this book is no exception. It does take place in Gotham City, has a masked crusader, but is not a Batman family book. It's something they make very clear at the beginning. We've seen a lot of Batman stories about heroes that come to Gotham, do things their own way, run afoul of the Batman, that sort of thing. Um, but they've all kind of been in like the walled garden of the Batman universe. This feels different. This isn't like a Jason Todd thing where he does his own thing. He's a rebel, but he wears a bat symbol and Alfred still has his room all made up for him. Uh, the star of the book is a woman called Violet Page. She's got the same ingredients as Bruce Wayne. She was born wealth, privilege, she had a traumatic childhood, and a thirst to exact vengeance. Her basic outlook, I think, is a little less grim and more angry. She has a bad attitude and a really bad temper. She's a bit of a hothead. Um, and maybe because the main character is female or the basic approach is different, but they do a great job of showing her as a no-nonsense hero, but it doesn't veer into the bloodthirsty territory of, like, all-star Batman and Robin. Um, all in all, this book is off to a great start. Invincible Iron Man number one marks the much-anticipated debut of Rory Williams, an African-American teenage girl who is now wearing the Iron Man armor. This is a great Iron Man book. While infamous Iron Man, the one that features Doctor Doom in his own Iron Man armor, has kind of a placeholder feel, kind of like a superior Spider-Man, like, okay, we're going to do this for a while, the Riri book has more of a legacy hero feel to it. Um, the continuity of the story is a casualty of Civil War II delays, and Tony Stark is already out of the picture. We're not sure if he's dead or whatnot. Um, Riri Williams, again, one of two people attempting to pick up the Iron Man mantle. She's young, she knew, she's new, and she does need a bit of guidance, and by the end of the issue, she gets it. Um, I welcome Riri Williams to the Marvel Universe, and I look forward to reading her adventures for a long time to come. Violent Love 1 is also out this week from Image Comics. It's a very Bonnie and Clyde-esque story. Um, the issue lays a solid foundation for what's sure to turn into a crime spree and um, a mitigated bloodbath. The book is well-written, has sympathetic characters so far, and we're only kind of in the prologue of the story. I think this one is worth sticking with. It seems like a lot of the newer Image titles come and go lately. Um, you get one for maybe one or two issues, that kind of thing. I don't know if it's a glut or what, but this, uh, this book most definitely stood out. Um, it wasn't like a spectacular, oh my God, you have to read this, but it was a good read. And if that's, you know, the kind of story you like, then, then this is definitely the, the book for you. So, um, yeah, please give it a try. I do hope it sticks around for a bit. And we end with Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Adventures. This is the second crossover of the two properties, but not a sequel. This time, the story brings together Batman from Batman the Animated Series, the one from the 90s, and the Turtles from the present Nickelodeon cartoon. If you have fond memories of Batman the Animated Series like I do, and most of us do, you'll love this issue. The same goes for if you're a Turtle fan. Um, all the characters are here, they kind of hit all the strokes, and it's just a lot of fun. This book is its a real no-brainer. That's all we have time for, so I'll see you at the store this week. Thanks.